In today's video, we're going to cover how Netlify's Victor Hugo template can be added to your project, include search indexing by Algolia, and add Google Cloud Builder to the mix, pushing your project to Firebase host. I apologize in advance if I put you to sleep like I did AJ, but there's a lot to cover. All right, let's get rolling. Go ahead and clone the branch for Netlify that's sitting out on lesson four. This is going to give us the basic example and boilerplate that we're going to need to continue forward. Go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code and you can see what I mean. It has a different layout than a normal Hugo site. So what we're looking at here is the site folder within the structure. And we, we can always go ahead and execute this directly with the Hugo command. Just be uh, warned that if you run Hugo directly, it's going to dump in a public folder. And that's not something we're necessarily going to want to look at. But as you can see here, it does present the site correctly. What we're going to do next is go ahead and npm install. What this is going to add is browser sync as well as many other tools that we're going to use during our build process. What we're going to do next is go ahead and do npm start. What that's going to do is bring up browser sync as well as starting the Hugo server command. At that time, you might be starting to get some errors from Algolia. Go ahead and comment out the Algolia section within config.toml. You may notice that this cleaned up the errors, but it also removed the search bar from the top. Until you add this information back in, that will stay removed. Please look over the configuration file. You'll see many areas that have your name in it. Look at those carefully in case you need to update several more. What we're gonna do next is copy the base of file out of the template and actually paste it into our own base of so that we overwrite the templates itself. And that way it allows us to do some editing. What we're gonna do next is remove the CSS files that are currently there and served from our static folder. And we're gonna update to the Victor Hugo way of doing things. You should notice right away that the colors for the theming actually turns back to the original blue color that Ionic presented. We're going to go ahead and take the custom.css file and we're going to copy that into source CSS imports. And then we're going to reference this file from our main.css as an import. You should notice at this time that there is still going to be that blue theming. We need to update correctly in the base of to link to that style sheet for main.css. At that time, it should be flip back to our purple. Then we're going to update the base of to include our app.js script. This is automatically created. Um, using the gulp commands. You should now see that in the console there is a line for the AJ reference. What we're going to do next is update this. So we're going to npm install lodash and just to show you the power of using Victor Hugo's template because this will allow us to include anything from lodash that we want into our site just like any other package you might want to install. You can then reference Lodash in app.js and just do a console out so we can see the version number of Lodash. Go ahead and open the project again and in the dev tools in the console, you'll see Lodash. This is just a simple example, but you could load anything you want into app.js or import it out of other files. It adds a lot of flexibility and power to your projects. Now we're gonna get started with Google Cloud Builder. I wanna walk you through cloudbuild.yaml. It should be in the base folder of your project. What this references is Docker files within the project. I always put it in Docker files and then kind of break out the categories um, that we're gonna be looking at. The Hugo file itself is gonna, the Hugo file itself is gonna reference version 5.1. If we're past that, once you're watching this video, you can update this Docker file and it will do a build. The next step in the process is a deploy.sh. The main reason I have this file is because of the git submodule command. It makes it a lot easier when we're working within the source repository for Google Cloud. It's going to do all of your submodules, do your npm install, and then actually run the npm run build, which creates the Hugo dist folder and will serve your project. If you happen to pull down the lesson four complete branch and you have a theme file that's in there and you haven't been able to get submodule in it and update, what you need to do first is remove the, that main folder. You can do this by doing remove.rf, sorry, remove dash rf site themes asia p hugo ionic. And then what you can do is do the git submodule command to add back in the theme file and update it so that we get the correct theme information as we go forward. 
If you're trying to walk along the steps of the Cloud Builder, at this point, you can try to do npm run Algolia, but as you can see, there's environment variables involved. You could run those manually by adding your environment variables, but at this time, I would suggest just continue on with the, the build steps that we're going to work on. There's information on the hmpe.com lesson itself that will provide info how to set up your Algolia index. The next part is setting up your service worker. This will happen automatically during your normal build process, but I just wanted to show each command on the NPN setup locally so you can see the file appear in the... The next part of this, we're gonna move through rather quickly as you can reference the original Firebase trigger CICD lesson. Um, what we're gonna do here is create a trigger based on our project um, in GitHub and select the repository that we're gonna create that trigger based on. Once that's complete, we will set up the branch that we want to trigger from and apply all of the environment variables that we want to set within our build trigger itself. So that includes all of the Algolia indexes uh, information as well as our Firebase token. Again, you can reference all of this at the lesson on hnp.com. Go up to the build history tab. You shouldn't see anything for our current project or anything at all if you open a new project. What we want to do is create a prod branch in our current directory and then use that branch to trigger our build. Once that build completes, you should have a Firebase hosted project. In the next episode, we'll cover multi-site domains. If you ever want an admin site for your Angular project or anything else that might use the same Firebase backend, this will be perfect for you. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so AJ can keep on programming.